So Scrum, Scrum doesn't solve problems, it reveals them. How and why is that valuable? Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an old um, adage that, that Ken uh, Ken Schwaber used to, used to say all the time. Um, Scrum's like a mirror. Right? It gives you a way of doing things, and if you can't do it that way, why? That's your mirror, right? What is the thing? Because it, it doesn't sound unreasonable, right? There's, no, there's nothing unreasonable in Scrum. You, you, you have a group of people who are working together towards a common goal, right? They're a team working together towards a common goal. You, you give them some work. They take a piece of that work. They build that work and they deliver that work. You take the feedback from people using that work and inform the next thing that you build and you keep going around that loop, right? Why, why is that so hard for organizations? It, it, it seems like a no-brainer, right? We, we, we do it all the time. How, how did your, your, your kids learn to walk? They fell over a lot and they kept picking themselves up and kept trying. They would see other people doing those things, right? They could see other people doing those things, the walking. I want to do that. Uh, for, for my daughter, um, we bought squeaky shoes. I don't know if you've ever seen these squeaky shoes. That's basically shoes with a squeaker in it. Um, that when you walk, it goes... <laughs> and th she loved that noise. So she learned to walk at nine months with those shoes on. And she was running down concrete concourses on holiday um, with those shoes. Going, <laughs> and it's just... just you. you that 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 mirror that other people are doing it, you have some incentive to do it, and then uh, 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 you get you get the outcome right. Most organizations move to adopting Scrum because they're struggling to deliver, right? They've failed in some way to achieve the desirable outcome, and people are like, "Oh, this sucks. Why is this taking so long? Why are we building the wrong thing? How do we build the right thing?" And somebody's like, well, there's this agile thing that people are talking about. They seem to be talking about these short feedback loops, delivering more value, maximizing that amount of, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. And then you go to try and do it in your organization. And suddenly all these mirrors pop up and say, you, you, you know, you go to try uh, simplest one ever. Uh, you go to try and ship your product to production. And what, what, what happens? The mirror pops up. And it's, you can't ship to production. I'm sorry, you have to fill out these 14 forms and you have to fill them out minimum six weeks in advance before you do a deployment. There you go. Well, there's something we need to fix, right? That's, that's the first thing we need to fix. Uh, that, that's an example. I used to work at Merrill Lynch uh, and, and that's exactly, if we didn't submit all the paperwork six weeks before a deployment, it was considered an emergency deployment and every emergency deployment got a black mark against your name, against like uh, in the hierarchy of departments. And if you get too many black marks at a particular level, um, then you know leadership comes down to slap people around and and say why why are you why are you doing this? Um, and the group that I worked for, because we were trying to do agile delivery, we were doing continuous delivery, right? So we were maybe shipping twice a day, um. We, we had the more black marks than any other part of the organization. I think it was, somebody said it as we had more black marks than the whole rest of the organization combined, right? Because we, we were just, we were generating two or three of them a day and that was just my product. There were other products in our, in our group as well. So, so, so that then disincentivizes people to do the right thing, right? Why is the rest of the organization not doing continuous delivery? Well, because they're not willing to just go, yeah, whatever, to your black marks, right? They didn't have strong enough leadership who says to the rest of the organization, no, this is fine. We're okay with this level of black marks. This is perfectly acceptable and we're getting the value we need. This is okay. And, and why did that exist? Why does that black mark system exist? It's, it's organizational craft, right? Our organizations build up a whole bunch of um, rules, I'm going to call them rules, they build up a whole bunch of rules because they did something, it worked well, and they wanted to enshrine that in the way they do things so that they continue to do well. 
And that idea worked fantastically when we existed in slow moving markets, right? And you'll see the organizations with the most bureaucracy are the organizations that have traditionally existed in the slowest moving markets, right? Government, right, always had lots of high levels of bureaucracy and rules and procedures. Banks, right? Banks have been around for, well, I think the first bank was, was it not Royal Bank of Scotland, 250 years? There's still an organization still exists. Can you imagine having 250 years of these rules and procedures? I worked with Kongsberg in Norway. That's a 200 year old mining company that found diamonds and then got into everything, right? They have all these rules. So for example, at Merrill Lynch, I had a rule that the software that I create had to be tested to make sure that it didn't interfere with the trading desk software if it was installed on in the trading desk. But the software I was building was for a small group of people in a call center who were calling people and had nothing to, not even in the same league as the trading desk folks. So this piece of software would never be installed over there, but yet I had to spend six months in testing and assessment to validate that that was true, even though it was of no relevance whatsoever. That's a rule that's applied across an entire organization for a very small group. Now, risk mitigation, right? If that software was installed in the trading desk and it interfered with it, maybe that's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars worth of risk to the organization. So they applied across the board. But there needs to be a reasonableness test, right? Needs to be a reasonableness test across all of the, 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 the organization's rules. So challenge, that's Scrum's job, is to challenge those rules. It pops up that mirror and says, no, you should be able to do this. You should be able to do continuous delivery. You should be able to have an ordered backlog that's just a list of stuff that you need to do with the most important thing at the top. You should be able to say, product owner, here's the product, you own it, you make the decisions. If you can't do that, there's a problem for leadership to solve, right? That pops up that mirror immediately. We've got to fix this. So um, the, the, the whole purpose of Scrum is not to solve your problems for you. It's to highlight that you have them in the first place, right? It's a little trigger mechanism that you can't do the short feedback loops. You can't deliver stuff into production. You can't get working product. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, right? That's, that's, I don't know what to call that. Is that the art of the negative? I don't know. Like, you, 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 I work with so many organizations where, um, here's, here's, here's the, how I would expect a conversation to go, right? Um, we need to do this. We can't do this. Okay. How, we can't do it that way, but you, if you did this and you did that, then you would be able to do it this way. Or let's pull in that compliance person that we need to sign off on this so we can make this change because it's a business need right we need to be able to ship more quickly whereas what really happens in organizations is you go oh we need to be able to do this and the other person goes nope you can't do that that's the end of the conversation how is that supporting the business right that the, the, the whole purpose for every department in your organization's existence is to support the business making money. Anything that's inhibiting the business making money is getting in the way and you need those mirrors, right? DevOps pops up those mirrors. Scrum pops up those mirrors. Kanban pops up those mirrors. These are all tools to help you see what's wrong because the way we do things is the thing that's getting in the way of actually delivering value. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, follow and subscribe. I always reply to comments. And if you want to have a chat about this or anything else, Agile, Scrum or DevOps, then please book a coffee with me through Naked Agility.